Right. Okay, that's all. So we're kind of switching topic now from scheduling and uh, CPUs and all that stuff to something completely different. So this is about idling of the rest of the platform, not about scheduling. So um, um, to get the mind shifted a little bit, I decided to you give a little short introduction to what this is to get everybody on board, so to say. Then we can go into the some of the details. So I'll keep uh, trying to have a um, quite a steady pace here in the beginning, but if there's anything that you want to ask, please just interrupt at any point. Okay? So yeah, I will do some quick introduction and give you top top overview what I mean by so kindly. And uh, so it will be more or less a, a quick background to what we're doing, what we're doing in this field. And then I will actually um, talk a little bit about the runtime PM centric approach. Uh, it's nothing new, it's been there for a while, but it's, uh, yeah. We can uh, have some discussions about it. It's something that we promote within Dinoro and, uh, and the members in Dinoro. And then we will look into the, the CPU cluster uh, power management thing that we have been working on. And uh, we can update on that, see what the, the next challenge is. is. OK? So yeah, on an SSC, we have lots of different stuff that we want to manage from an idle point of view. And um, it's not just about, uh, yeah, as I said, scheduling. We have uh, lots of devices and resources that we uh, that we can put in a low power state and save uh, save power when they are not in use. So, so idling is about avoid wasting power when we're idle, more or less. That's the whole point. And uh, to do that, uh, we have a bunch of uh, frameworks in the kernel that is available. And uh, I've listed them here. And uh, we have system PM. And uh, maybe that's not really a good uh, good name, but the point is, it's uh, it's the it's the infrastructure that we have in the kernel that uh, allows a system wide uh, low power state of the SSC, including all the resources and the, and, and uh, devices that we have. And the other scenario is when you have a part of the system that can go idle when other parts are in use. And uh, that is the runtime PM framework that we're using to deal with us. And to, uh, to be able to control devices in a, in a, uh, together in groups, uh, we have PM domains. And uh, PM domains can be implemented very uh, differently, of course. And uh, But uh, in some cases, there is uh, there is a lot of common uh, things that we want to deal with in, in a PM domain. And that's why we have the generic power domain. So it's a, it's a collection of, uh, of things that, um, yeah, of issues and, uh, and problems that shows up that it's to deal with in a, within a common framework. So in, in uh, EMPD, you can kind of uh, describe the topology of, uh, of the SOC. Power domains, power rails, and devices, and so you have sub subdomains and master domains, and all that kind of stuff can be described in uh, in device tree and and populated in the, as a generic power domain. And then the other uh, other um, framework that is interesting from this perspective is the device being QoS, which is where you can put constraints on on latency, more or less, of of uh, yeah, waking up devices. So Sometimes you don't want the devices to go into a low power state because it's costly when it's wake up and you don't want to have that latency. So then you can put these constraints on the devices, which you do with this uh, framework. And uh, talking about wake ups, we also have, have a, a framework or a couple of frameworks for dealing with wake ups for devices, how you configure this. So that's, these are the most interesting frameworks. There's, there's others, of course, as well, but this is the most interesting from an idle management point of view, I would say. Are you guys familiar with this framework, or it's completely new? Well, you have to have familiar with it. That bad. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Kevin? I said I'm familiar with it. Yeah, that's good. We can have a talk, you and I. <laughs> yeah. 
getting up for again. <laughs> okay, but yeah, anyway, if you want to ask something, just do it. So uh, a while ago, when uh, Linaro started to get involved with this, um, we realized there was a couple of things that we need to nail out. And um, first of all, we see that there were some common cases between uh, these two big frameworks, runtime PM and system PM. So we wanted to make these two frameworks yeah, collaborate a little bit better. So that is uh, what we have been doing a while. And uh, we also wanted to simplify for drivers also to implement this, uh, the, the PM support. And the generic power domain that has been talking about, uh, we looked at that and realized that this needs to be uh, modernized and uh, yeah, refreshed. And of course, there is also lots of various optimization one we can look into and we could do. And uh, of course, to uh, to enable our uh, our uh, ARM vendors to use this code, we try to provide a couple of uh, reference implementations. That is what we have been doing so far. So this is nothing new. This is background. And uh, one of the things that uh, kind of was um, a really important. Um, thing that we did was that we invented something that we call runtime PM centric approach. Uh, in principle, it's about when you have a, when you have a device and you want to put it into a low power state, uh, that low power state is often very similar um, in both of these scenarios that I talked about before. So from a runtime PM point of view, and from a system suspend point of view, it's often the same kind of power state that you uh, that you are putting the device into. So instead of dealing with these two completely separate, you can um, yeah, reuse the code between these. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's actually why it's called uh, runtime PM centric. Because if you do only runtime PM uh, implementation, you can reuse that and get system PM support in your driver for free. That's kind of the, the idea behind it. Uh, but it also, the whole idea was also to make it simpler for the driver uh, authors to deploy this support. So instead of having lots of code and dealing with lots, lots of core, core cases, everything should uh, be uh, really easy to deploy. That's, that's the idea. And we ended up with something like this. This is a very simplified uh, case. But uh, this is a driver. Uh, so. The driver uh, also have to have to deploy the, the runtime PM support in there, and when that is completed, it doesn't have to care much about the system PM support except doing this um, setup of callbacks. So the important part here is those uh, runtime PM helper functions: PM runtime force suspend and PM runtime force resume. So those takes care of um, these corner cases when you uh, want to put when you want to make the device to go into a low power state uh, during system suspend. So if the device is already in a low power state, just leave it, just leave it there. And uh, when you wake up, the when the system wakes up and the device is in a low power state, don't wake <coughs> it up unless it's really needed. This, this helper function takes care of that. So everything is yeah. quite simple. So this is an easy case, which is actually quite uh, common. Uh, the only thing you should uh, note there is, of course, you might have different um, wake-up configurations uh, of, of the device, depending on these different uh, scenarios. In, in the runtime PM low power state, you might have one, one wake-up. In the system suspend low power state, you have different wake-ups. So you need to deal, deal with that. But still, those helpers can, can be used. Maybe not exactly like this, but maybe you have, um, maybe you have your own set of uh, callbacks and call these helpful functions instead. It's, it's, it's still doable. So this is actually something that we've been promoting within uh, Linaro for a while, and also in the community of this course. So we have been seeing uh, <coughs> uh, quite an uh, increase uses, use, usage of this, uh, just, just to show some, some, uh, some facts about that. So in, in Prefistin, we introduced these helpers, and now in 4 for 11, we have actually 46 uh, deployment of this, so it's a uh, yeah, it's a trend. So I'm glad it was useful. That's um, that's yeah. Uh, so talking about these helpers, I have some uh, I have some ideas 
that we might want to um, um, change with this. And I guess that's me and Raphael could discuss about this. But uh, we talked about having these device links uh, respected in these helpers. Um, well, we can continue that discussion, see if I, sh yeah, I can help out doing the work, of course. But then another thing that's uh, more a bigger bigger idea that I have. We have this. So the answer to the second one is no. <clears throat> because if it could be done, it could be done this way. No, because of PCI, essentially. Uh, yes, but in some cases of the ACI, wouldn't this work? PCI. PCI. PCI bus type. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not saying that we should uh, convert all. I'm just saying that there, yeah, there is. Well, okay. yep. Yep. <clears throat> it's just an idea. To um, the idea behind it, especially to um, uh, take advantage of this default resume feature, so you don't have to. When you wake up, you don't have to resume the device unnecessarily. And this helps 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 with that. Yeah, it's just an idea. We can think of it at some point. OK. So just a quick uh, update on the gen generic power domain, which I talked about before. We're moving into the CPU cluster uh, update uh, as of this. But just to show you some, uh, some update, what we've been doing here is that we have uh, the recent highlight here is that we've been, yeah, the evolution of the generic power domain keeps going on. <coughs> and the latest, the most important thing to, to know about is that we've been working on minimizing latencies when you do, when you power off the power domain. And we have added a so-called RQ safe domain, support, <laughs> which means that if the domain needs to be powered off in atomic context, uh, that wasn't possible because, uh, before because of the, the locking implementation in the, in the NPD. So that has been uh, taken care of. And we also have this multiple idle state, domain idle state support, which is kind of mapping to CPU idle state. So it's something that we've been thinking of, uh, yeah, reusing for CPU idle states. And an uh, uh, interesting fact is also the wide, uh, the increased usage of the MPD. We started out working with the MPD. 316, 315, something like that. And um, it should be yeah, obviously um, on vendors so that this is a useful thing for them. So it's, it's really nice that the community is growing around uh, um, the NPD and people is not actually contributing to the code as well. So it's really, really nice to see. So I, I'm just curious um, regarding multiple IOC support for other devices. You like to make some charge saying, okay, I expect to be sleeping for X, so I think I can enter Y stage. Um, how are you going to do SOC idling if you don't know what the actual SOC idle residency type is? If each device is going to idle at its own instance rate, yes. fact, you need to take the union, or sorry, the, the intersection of all the yes. idle. Yes. But you don't necessarily know what that is. So uh, how we deal with that today <laughs> is that we don't, I mean, uh, what you're saying is that you probably want to describe that in a, in a device. That doesn't exist today. I've been uh, suggesting that on the mailing list for, for a while and some other folks as well. We haven't agreed on that yet. So what's, uh, how we deal with that today is that we have, uh, we measure, we measure the time it takes to idle the device <laughs> and to resume the device. We do that internally in EMP and keeps track of this time. So when we, uh, yeah, so we use that information. <coughs> it could be improved. <laughs> Measuring time also takes time. Can you hear me, Ulf? Yes. I think it's important to say too that it's not the device itself that makes the decision. It's the Gen PD at the end when all the devices are idle that make the decision. So the the union actually happens <clears throat> at the domain level, not at the device level. Yeah, yeah, that's really important. So we actually have a Gen PD governor. So when uh, when the device is about to go idle, those constraints that I talked about earlier with the PMQS framework is being validated within Gen PD, and all these constraints. Is Collected and uh, looped. Right. Only when all the in the main satisfied. Yes. 
Any other questions? Okay, so now we're going into this other stuff that we talked about, CPU, PM cluster. Um, looking at these kind of uh, complex uh, topologies, uh, CPUs and caches and coherency and all these different uh, devices that we have. It's, it's a complex, it, we have complex topologies today. And uh, so far we have been using it, uh, these kind of um, existing frameworks quite, um, yeah, those has worked out quite well uh, when you deal with the kind of devices that isn't CPU, uh, yeah, within the CPU subsystem, I would say. And, um, but, and, and CPU idle has dealt with <coughs> CPUs, more or less. So when we look at this complex system, we realize that CPU idle, the framework of CPU idle doesn't really scale no more. Uh, especially when you have this multi-cluster SMT system. It's getting really hard and messy to deal with that within the CPU idle framework. So uh, we thought it makes sense to explore the current solution that we have for generic devices to also cover CPUs. So this is something that we've been working on now for a while, uh, which we call CPU PM cluster. That's a project <laughs> name. Template. And uh, to show the problem, how it was or how it is, that means that we can have the CPUs being managed by the CPU idle, but it's really hard to control the cluster and coherency in, in, a, in a generic fashion. Mm -hmm. So to deal with that, you would have to have some kind of platform hacks. And that wouldn't be very nice. So this is what we sort of thought of in a, in a very top level view. So we want to make use of runtime PM to do the reference counting on uh, on the CPUs, but to know when the cluster <coughs> is about, uh, when the cluster can go wide. So that's that's runtime PM part. The generic power domain parts allows you to describe the topology and the domains and all these stuff. You can put it in so you get the topology described. So it is probably important to say that the cluster is usually part of the, of the larger domain. Like you have multiple IO devices in it as well. So the states of, the, of those IO devices uh, affect the states of the state of the cluster, including the CPU, right? Or CPU cores. Yes. That is why this. So uh, that was the information missing from CPU idle, right? Because it doesn't know about the devices no. at all. So, exactly. Yeah. So this solves that problem, kind of. If you if we wouldn't have done it like this, we'd have some kind of glue layer between CPU idle and the other world, which this does uh, address smoothly. So um, the generic power domain provides the infrastructure. What we implement is a specific uh, 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 domain that there is <coughs> you hook in your SSC specific uh, stuff in uh, or callbacks inside the generic power domain mm -hmm. and. The CPU PM domain is what it's about the CPU. So it, the CPU power domain is just, just another use of generic power. And on top of that, we have kind of a, a platform driver which deals with um, actually putting the CPU into low power state. And the, in the ARM64 case, it's a PCI driver for this. So that driver calls into the PCI to uh, power off and uh, on. So, so far, um, one can say that the infrastructure that we needed in the generic power domain is launched and completed. There is nothing new that we need to invent on that level, so far, at least. <coughs> and what is being uh, discussed on the mailing list now is the, um, which is uh, Lina from um, Qualcomm that has posted this, this series in a, it was a couple of weeks ago. It's the CPU PM domain part which is being discussed, and mm -hmm. also the deployment of how uh, this, this runtime P and reference counting should be done. And the final thing is the PCI changes that is needed, because we thought we needed OS initiated mode to support this. There is also some discussions on, on OS initiated mode versus platform coordinated mode. 
So this is where we is where we are right now. Any questions? Yeah, so I didn't see a lot of discussion on the types that are coming up. Uh, I've been re reviewing <coughs> this part. Yeah, yeah. This part. Oh, I see. And I know Kevin has been looking into some of those as well. Right. So there will be some. Yeah. Some yeah. Input, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. I spoke to Lena yesterday, and she was a little bit busy with. Uh, we, we are like internal activities, so mm -hmm. we will probably have to expect uh, it takes a while for her to refresh the patch or something. I don't really know how we're going to address that. Maybe we will help her and do the refresh or, uh, also. <laughs> so Lina is, Lina is actually a member engineer in Linaro. So she's working for Qualcomm, but when she has time, she works for yeah. this experience. Yeah. So it's not an optimal uh, setup right now, because we can't really tell her that you need to prioritize this. The call can have to decide. So maybe we uh, we, yeah, we have to address that if it if it's, uh, takes too long. So I had some uh, good discussions with uh, PCI and oceanated mode already, and uh, let's continue with that. <clears throat> so, some next step that we see in this is that, um, as I said, we have, we have been deploying this for ARM64 ARM using PSI, and we want to explore this approach for an ARM32 SOC as well. It's going to be a lot more hard because there's uh, fragmentation on how you do, uh, how you actually power down and on, on, a, on and off the CPUs. But still, it's going to be very interesting because we will definitely find some new corner cases. And uh, hopefully that would mean that we could uh, improve uh, both solutions, so to say. And then, of course, we want to deploy the complete unified SSC idling solution, which Raphael was mentioned here. There is, so we can tie in all these devices. Uh, when there is one device that wants to prevent the cluster from going down, we want to see this complete solution actually working. So that's, uh, that's the next step also. So, in the end, we need to pick a reference platform for this, and we have a couple of the uh, ARM64 platforms in mind. But there may be others. We mm -hmm. haven't really decided on this yet, what, what to pick here. Uh, so other open areas is that uh, the current way the CPU PM domain governor, uh, when it gets notification that, uh, that the cluster can go idle, it uh, it wants to know about when it's about to wake up the next time, uh, yeah, to take a good decision on what idle states to put the, the, the cluster in. <coughs> and today we only use the next timer wake up event, which is just a very, very um, uh, yeah, bad, uh, um, yeah, it's the best we can do, small efforts. And uh, how can we approve that? That's, uh, that's a really interesting thing. And, um, well, that's, <coughs> that's an interesting question in general because the, it's the same problem is there in CPU idle to some extent, right? Yes. We have a menu governor yes. doing some magic statistics uh, collection and so on, mm -hmm. and then using it going forward, but that's not perfect, let's just say. So, yeah. <coughs> yeah, so this is the thing that we want to explore more on get thoughts about them. And yeah. Daniel is working on the IRQ predictions. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to see what we can do in this field. What you need is the next, next wicket for each CPU in the power domain. <coughs> yes. And you would like an absolute value? An absolute value in what sense? I mean, um, CPU idle. Uh, what we get is the sleeping duration. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so generally yeah. there is a latency uh, involved yeah. and there is uh, uh, some things that can be referred to as uh, um, the time that 
So it, it, it may not make sense to put the uh, cluster in a low power state if it's yeah. going to be working out immediately, right? Because uh, it won't save any energy there. Oh, yeah, you're right. So this is the the name for this. I don't remember. Target yeah. residence. Target in the protein. No matter what residence or something like that, yeah. right? Yeah. My point is mainly it, because there is two ways to, to say how long I will sleep either. I will sleep for 100 milliseconds, or I will wake up at, at that time. Because if I was just so yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah. not the absolute time. I mean, in terms of uh, I don't know the clock value. And yeah, the point, it, it is about the duration of sleep essentially. So how much time we expect to be sleeping? Right now, yes, I agree. But this is an issue that uh, if you want to use that later, you have to know when. From when it's got it started. If you have an absolute value, you know that you when we expect the CPU to wake up. Uh, yeah, but then when you make the decision, it's just at the starting point. You make the decision when you go idle. Instantly, you make the decision and you go idle. And yeah. then you have to make the decision at this point, at this point, like which state to go to, right? Mm -hmm. So so you only need to know how much time you are going to be sleeping, essentially. You don't care about it. The absolute things. Absolute time is idle now plus expected sleep. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, I guess it's just a. It doesn't matter as long as the data is valid. Yeah. <laughs> so just it, the many donor stuff reminded me performing multiplier stuff in there is completely broken. It's um, using <laughs> zero for the load of the CPU always. Uh, so it tries to. Make sure that you enter a shallow <laughs> CPU idle state if there's load on the CPU. The load average. So it's uses. not exactly like that, but we can talk about it. So, yeah. so the, there are issues with the menu governor that people are well, well, well aware of, but it has the same problem as the scheduler load balancing. Essentially, if you touch yeah. anything in it, somebody will scream. <clears throat> That's it. I think the point is too that we we guess wrong quite often when doing this for CPUs, but it's much more expensive to guess wrong when it's an entire cluster in terms oh, yeah. of latency. That's a good point. Yes. Yeah. So we will have to follow up on that. Uh, one thing that I hasn't uh, thought of at all is is the schedule deadline. If there is any other constraints on on uh, when you want to select an idle state. I, I don't know about uh, scheduling that much, but we should probably tie the schedule deadline with um, the CPU uh, POS stuff, yeah. and then you can automatically use that stuff. Yeah. Okay, that would make sense. We should be able to compute the, the maximum. Latency yeah. that allows that set to be. So actually, <coughs> you can, now you can, uh, you can add the QoS constraints first to you. Yeah. Uh, so, right. yeah, and then it will just take the aggregate. So, in, in this um, deployment, the CPU is just a device. So, in principle, you should be able to use the dev PIP QoS, shouldn't it? Like yeah, that. yes, exactly, because that's what we yeah. use actually for CPU, uh, for the per CPU resume latency yeah. constraints. So, yeah. So, yeah, but that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah. using existing framework. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's as long as we know the, what to put in there. Yeah. I guess that's a tricky point. So, where's the for that? So which is the next like, like, timer on the cluster? So I'm about to post a patch that which uh, gets rid of that stupid. Uh, oh, we are guessing the proper target CPU when we add a timer, which is completely bogus. Uh, so uh, instead we uh, queue always on the local CPU, and then if if the CPU goes idle, it tells uh, the infrastructure that it's idle and it has a timer which can be expired on any CPU. So in case the timer actually expires, it's going to wake up some other CPU. 
it's going to be handled or expired by some other CPU. So, but in the, we, we are already building a hierarchy here in order to avoid a global lock. So, and we have both the next global, <coughs> which means the next, I don't care where it expires timer, and the next local, which is pinned. We have both informations available there, so we could store it there and you could retrieve it for the from there for a complete node. Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, that's could be just before time. So yes. leaders human nodes now, they need clustering. Yeah, but we can we can uh, twiddle the hierarchy of building. Yeah. But I think so, it, so it's so it's cluster cluster based. Another important part is that so timers are only one source of wake ups, right? Because right. Uh, there are multiple other internal sources that wake us mm -hmm. up. I mean, need to know about those. Yeah, some, some something about. Yeah, that's that's, that's what, yeah, what any is going to do. Part, but yeah. but actually, this information is computed at the point where we go, where we should be done, at the point where we do the whole timer dance, because if if we are dealing with the interrupt rate of 500 microseconds, periodic uh, interrupts coming in on a CPU and the CPU is idle otherwise, it doesn't make any sense to do the whole uh, timer disarming, rearming thing. Because you know you're going to wake up in 500 mic microseconds from now anyway. Yeah. So we can mix that information in into the whole timer. Yeah, so, so timer what I was and, okay. thinking about is just leaving <coughs> timers as one of the yes. interrupt sources in, right. a, in a larger scheme. Yeah. Sort of. Just Is for timers, we actually know <laughs> yeah. Yeah, precisely well, yeah. when they are going to fire. Yeah, yes, that, but that's, a, that's, a, that's an important difference, but it is quite clear. Yeah. yeah. So we want to make that distinction for timers because well, we well that, and they are an actual device. The timers. No, but they generate interrupts. Yeah, but you have to switch them off. I mean, they they have their own idle thing. Yes. That also is different from the regular device in the room. Yeah. And they also can be in a domain that can be power gated. Yeah. So this is what what. Um, I think I was saying. Yeah, so they, so there's, a case, there's this callback where you can shut down a, a, a clock event device where you can do actually power management. No, I choose was okay. a statement. <laughs> I think we all agree on this is. Something that we should continue exploring. That's good. Anything else? Okay. Um, just just a few few uh, things that um, it's not directly related to the CPU cluster thing, but other stuff that could be. Uh, improve for SSI, SSC idling and all, and some some needs that we have <coughs> that we have seen. Currently, it's only possible to have one EM domain attached per device, and I've discussed a little bit about that with uh, with Raphael. There's apparently a need from Nvidia and uh, Qualcomm about uh, they have uh, two power rails per um, per device, and we need to deal with that in some way. And we also have this uh, the other thing that's uh, called com specific. They have a, uh, where they can uh, where, where they can put the uh, the power domain and the the, the rails in uh, different performance state. So depending on the frequency of the of the device, it might generate that you want to, you want to increase the, the performance of the of the power domain. So we we wish it's working for Linaro as well. He's, uh, Exploring this field, and he wants to reuse parts of the infrastructure that the, that the generic parliament provides, because it gives you the possibility of uh, yeah, deploying the or populating the the topology. So essentially, it is the same uh, the same set of data. We 
because it, it is based on, uh, on the concept of domains, right? Like, yes. So we, we have a description of the ancient DB anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is uh, sort of natural to, to try to, to at least use that information. Yeah. In a so, way. What what I'm uh, reluctant there is about the, the whole um, the whole thing with sock idling is about uh, idling. Oh, yes, it <laughs> yeah. Is about that so idling. so this is something that is different, but and somehow it makes sense anyway to reuse these up infrastructures. So yeah, uh, I'm reviewing the rest code and see what it, uh, if it makes sense and doesn't look that uh, controversial actually, at least to me. And there is another thing that uh, we uh, we found out as well is there um, um, there's no way for or maybe there is a way but I haven't figured it out yet but you currently MPD has a I would say a, <laughs> a more, a not not so modern way of dealing with wake ups and we need to modernize that code to allow uh, more or less the subsystem and device drivers to inform the United Power Man of yeah, dealing with different scenarios for wake ups. That's a couple of things that I've been looking at. Otherwise, that's that's what I have. <coughs> okay, thanks for your time. See you later again, Kevin. Okay, thank you.